www.greencitymarket.com today. Hi, this is Melissa Flynn from Green City Market. You're listening to Smart Talk. The Mike Novak Show starts in three, two, one. Hey, so as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. The Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. Green, gardening, and environment radio. Flavored with a dash of humor. Welcome to intelligent, irreverent talk about plants and the planet they grow on. Your questions, comments, and participation are always welcome at 877-711-5611. Good planets are hard to find. Temperate zones and tropic climes. True currents and thriving seas, wind blowing through breathing trees, strong ozone and safe sunshine. Well, good planets are hard to find. Good planets are in the main. This hour is brought to you by Bartlett Tree Experts. Every tree needs a champion. Go to Bartlett.com. Jet streams, perfect air. And here they are, Peggy Malecki and Mike Nova. Good planets are in the main. Right. Yeehaw. And welcome to the show. Hey, look at that. We're on Facebook Live. We're on Ustream Tube Live. <laughs> oh, what? What? Huh? Where, where is he? Okay. I, and I've got my my pen, my pen of no. No. Okay. Ooh, no. Back. no. No. Okay. So anytime I I don't agree with something, I just say. No. Okay. I just play the bat. I've got here's the well. I've got my Robin here. And I've got <laughs> I've got my COVID nineteen um, virus right right here in my hand. Not many people get to hold on to a virus like Ooh. this. You can see it's even glowing. So uh, I hope I don't get okay. infected by it. All right, you put your glasses. <laughs> All right, Peggy's got her glasses on. I got so, my rose colored glasses on. Rose colored glasses. So this is. <laughs> uh, I saw this sitting there. Wait a second. Actually, you have to be watching us on Facebook. Yeah, to, to get it, I'm, I'm actually, this. It look, this looks just like a COVID-19 virus. Um, and so uh, I'll try to keep my distance, but, I, but <laughs> I'll just throw it at people. Well, if I, we're, if we're, like. we're all quarantined, isolated in our homes here. So you can keep that right over there. And, I, and I've got a new orientation here. I can sit here and look at the birds out the window i got the bird feeder up it only took the birds four days to figure out that there was nice. a bird feeder out there congratulations um, you got yeah. the bird feeder and now my job consists of banging on the window when the <laughs> pigeons get in there and they get out of here get the pigeons out of there oh on, wait man. wait till you start playing games with the squirrels when they get on there well they have oh and there's a pigeon right on cue okay because the, the squirrels bang the window once or twice yeah the next time they're like yeah the next right. time yeah they, 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 they don't care so our, our first guest is trying to figure out if she should stay or leave at this point uh, our first guest looks like she's <laughs> in jail and we're going to get to her uh deborah shore commissioner for the metropolitan water reclamation district of greater chicago and the reason she's on the show today is uh uh and so far in our seven weeks in exile here uh, we've talked uh, seeds, we've talked soil, we've talked uh, all kinds of things, but today we're talking water and water safety in not just a, in a, a time of uh, coronavirus pandemic, but always mm -hmm. what you should, <laughs> what you should and what you should not flush uh, in your toilet. Um, which is a lot more interesting than you might think. And she's given me the thumbs up. So Deborah Shore will be with us today. And uh, we hope that uh, you join us. I think everything's cool right now. Everything's going really well. So don't touch anything. Don't move anything. I even have the banner in the back. All right. It's the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. We're glad to have you on board. Stick around. We think it's going to be a great show. And we will be right back. 
AM and FM. That a spoonful of Clorox makes your temperature go down. Your temperature go down. Temperature go down. Just a spoonful of Clorox makes your temperature go down. It's the latest COVID craze. Supposing we hit the body with whether it's uh, all right. No, we don't want to hear that. Welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki and. Oh, what's that? Your magic wand you've got there, Peggy? There's no place like home. <laughs> There's no place like COVID, and I have my little COVID virus with me as well. Um, and one of the things I'm finding out is that there are uh, two or three folks out there, and that was uh, what's his name? Uh, the um, oh, see, now I'm not going to remember any of these names. I have no idea. Oh, uh, Randy Rainbow. Um, is that it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he does uh, parodies all the time, and uh, the COVID, there's so many different parody uh, songs out there, and um, there's like two or three groups or people who are stuck at home are doing, the, uh, um, yeah, that was Randy Rainbow, the, uh, the, uh, the Clorox song, and um, there's other folks out there who are just doing a bunch of these, and, and as I become more sophisticated, about finding the musical bumps that are parodies of songs uh i find <laughs> <laughs> this is it's a whole it's become a whole no, i'm just looking all of a sudden i got all these likes and laughs on facebook here oh everybody likes randy rainbow huh i guess okay. so uh, and there's a couple of others and as soon as i find their names i will i will uh, let you know who they are too because uh there's other folks out there who are doing this. Welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. Enough of Randy Rainbow and enough of the uh, COVID nonsense. We need to talk clean water today. And that's why we have a friend of the show on the program with us, Deborah Shore, commissioner with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. She is ensconced somewhere in the wilds of Indiana. And I have to be careful. Uh, what I say about Indiana, because Randall, our engineer, is from Indiana, and he'll just he'll just cut the signal like that. We'll be gone. <laughs> You'll be hearing test tone for the next hour in in forty five minutes. So, uh, welcome, Deborah. How are you? Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Mike. Uh, I'm staying safe and staying at home. Uh, I'm glad. And and our show. Our show goes out uh, some places uh, on the same day and then on other places across the country uh, the following week, so six or seven days later. And I'm going to tell you, folks, um, six or seven days later, you still need to be careful. You still need to be safe. There's a lot of people are getting uh, all frustrated because they feel they've been locked up for too long. And um, as I said last week, the virus doesn't care doesn't care how long you've been locked up and how frustrated you are. doesn't care if we're bored. Nope. Yep. You're going to have to continue to wash your hands. You're going to have to continue to maintain a safe distance. Um, later on in this uh, hour, we're going to talk about reopening some of the nurseries, the garden centers in both Illinois and Michigan, which is good as long as people are paying attention and being safe. If it, if it were me, you know, I, I would drive up in the car, open the wind, open the trunk and say, throw it in the trunk. And then about five days later, maybe I'll, I'll take it out of the trunk, whatever it is. Um, that's being yeah. su super cautious, but no, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So, yeah. And what, uh, one of the things people are being cautious with is using wipes too, which is part of why. Yeah. Here. And there are different kinds of wipes and why don't we just go right there, Deborah? Uh, because one of the things, first of all, for those who are not familiar with the MWRD, explain what your mission is. So thanks, Mike. Uh, the Water Reclamation District was founded actually 131 years ago as the Chicago Sanitary District with a mission of protecting the drinking water for people in Chicago by keeping sewage out of the lake. So it's the agency, it's since expanded to serve uh, Cook County, uh, the city of Chicago, and the other municipalities in Cook County. It operates seven wastewater treatment plants, and it's responsible for treating sewage and managing stormwater throughout Cook County. Uh, and uh, as such, you, uh, you look out after what people are putting in their toilets, to be blunt. 
about it. And uh, I received uh, a, a couple of newsletters from you recently and from actually other MWRD members, uh, commissioners, uh, about what you should and should not be putting in your toilet during the time of coronavirus or any time really. But part of the problem is so many people now are using wipes. They're right. using wipes to keep their hands clean. I'll be really honest with you when, when all of this started uh, and I managed to get my hands on some hand sanitizer, I thought, oh, wow, this is going to go, I'm going to go through this really fast. Well, when you're uh, quarantined at home, when you're sitting at home, what I found is I don't use the hand sanitizer. I'm just using soap and water. I find I'm not using the, I almost never use the wipes. I use them uh, to wipe off a, a box or a package that might've come in from the outside. But generally I'm not using the wipes either. Uh, I think wipes are, I've got a, um, a, a little container of them in the car, uh, but I've only driven like three times in seven weeks. So, uh, and that's, that's part, partly why our scar, skies are so clear are around us right now. So, uh, that said, people do use wipes and sometimes they use them at home and they figure, well, you know, it's just a wipe. I can toss it down the toilet. What's wrong with that, Deborah? So, Mike and Peggy, even though many wipes may be labeled flushable, and in fact, they can be flushed. You can flush all kinds of things down a toilet that shouldn't be flushed. You can flush golf balls and shredded t-shirts. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Golf balls? That's when you have a really bad game. <laughs> so, I'll repeat this uh, several times, but the only matter that should be flushed down a toilet are pee, poop, and toilet paper. Don't flush paper towels. Don't flush Kleenex. Don't flush flushable wipes. Don't flush wet wipes or disinfecting wipes. Don't flush dental floss. And here's why. All of those things don't dissolve. Toilet paper is designed to dissolve when it's agitated by the flushing action and flows through pipes. But none of those other products dissolve. You can flush them but they don't dissolve. And what that means is when they, they can get caught on in the pipes, dental floss will get caught around a pipe and then other things will get caught on the floss or they end up in the pumps that each municipality has to raise, it's called a lift station that raises the gravity fed uh, sewage and pumps it to a treatment plant. Those clog up the pumps, they can burn out, or they have to be cleaned by teams to go mm -hmm. and actually lift out all the stuff. And it can cause basement backups when these pumps get clogged and thus you have raw sewage in your basement, just a terrible thing. So don't flush anything but pee, poop, and toilet paper which she said she's going to say over and over again, and we're going to say that over and over again. Um, and it must be frustrating to you that some of these wipes are called flushable when they're really not. So here's, here's what I've learned, uh, Mike and Peggy. A number of states, Washington State passed a law recently, it was uh, enacted in late March, requiring labeling on their packages with a, a circle with a line through it across a toilet that will go on the packages of wipes, indicating use the wipes, just don't flush them, throw them out in the trash. California is considering a similar bill. Minnesota is too, and I've spoken with some members of the General Assembly in Illinois who are interested in potentially introducing a bill like that. In other words, use these products. They are important for disinfecting and so on. Just throw them out in the trash. Don't flush them. This is one of those uh, situations where there are unintended consequences and sometimes they can be good, I would think. Uh, you talk about laws in different states that might get passed as a result of the pandemic and uh, we might find some other ones, but this this would be a good law to pass in Illinois, wouldn't it? Well, 
I think it's a good approach. And uh, I'll share with you a link you can post on our website, but in the village of Wheaton, which had uh, mostly it's local municipalities, by the way, that have problems with these clogged pipes and pumps. By the time it gets to the larger interceptors leading to the plants that the Water Reclamation District operates, uh, our pipes are bigger and so forth. But in local municipalities, and these are the local pipes from people's homes, that's where they're seeing these clogs. In Wheaton, the utility manager did uh, a demonstration putting toilet paper, paper towels, and two kind of wipes, each in separate bowls of water, and mixing them around to agitate them as flushing would. And then he showed how all those products, except for toilet paper, don't dissolve. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Proof and positive. Go ahead, Vic. It was that, that one article that you posted on the blog that was talking about the even- The fatberg? Yeah, and putting wipes in a blender and they still oh. didn't break down. Oh, in a blender. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, with your smoothies. That's- uh, But they still didn't break down, even in that sort of an agitation. And then there's uh, one more, uh, the part of the newsletter I mentioned that you sent out, Deborah Shore. Um, you write, did you hear about the monstrously- large fatberg consisting of fat oil grease and yes wet wipes 200 oh. are you ready for this 210 feet in diameter found clogging a sewer in england in 2019 that's crazy um that's but that's the kind of thing that can happen isn't it deb sure i i certainly hope your listeners know they shouldn't pour oil or grease uh, or fat from cooking down the drain because what happens is it will congeal mm -hmm. and become solid and firm and then stuck in a pipe that will catch other things like wipes and so forth and when these grow bigger and bigger and block pipes they're called fatbergs and if you go online and do a google search you'll see some uh, notable ones. And there have been some in the Chicago region as well. That's why restaurants have special grease traps and you're supposed to dispose of your grease separately. Mm -hmm. But folks, yeah, believe me, I understand the inclination. I'm going to raise my hand and say I've been a bad boy of occasions. Uh, but now I've learned my lesson and uh, I'm moving on. I, You know, I could sit here and argue with you and say, well, what about pickle juice? You know, how hard, how, how much damage can you do? But then, you know, pickle juice leads, uh, that's a slippery slope. It leads to other things in your toilet, doesn't it, Deborah? Again, Mike, uh, the only things you should ever flush down your toilet are pee, poop. And <laughs> she just keeps, yeah. oh, three P's. And if you want to do anything else, <laughs> You just say no. no. All right. So just letting folks no. know that. And I think for those of us who live in old homes, it starts right at home. It's not even where is it going to be clogging down the road. For those of us with old homes, old pipes, perhaps tree roots growing into the, as the line goes out to the street, you don't right now don't want to have a plumber out having to clean all of that out because you flushed a wipe. That's right. That's right. And uh, the other thing to remember is if people are worried about running out of toilet paper and some of the recent problems are because there was some hoarding in various places and so people relied on paper towels or Kleenex or in California they had an instance with shredded t-shirts. There are other things you can use to wipe yourself. Just throw them out. Don't flush them. <laughs> Shredded T-shirts. Oh, gosh. When, it, when we get to that point, uh, I'll let you know. Okay. All right. That's Deborah Shore. She's commissioner of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. When we come back, we'll talk about something else you should not be flushing down your toilet. That's pharmaceuticals. It's all of a piece here, folks. Just don't do it. It's the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki, and we will be right back. Big one. Me Corona. 
this guy, and he's done a bunch of these songs, too. All right, welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Corona. Corona. Welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Peggy <laughs> Malecki. We're very pleased to have uh, Deborah Shore, Commissioner from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. We've been talking about, um, you know, it, it seems simple, and then until people mess it up and back get stuff backing up in their homes and you don't want to have that happen during a pandemic you really don't so be smart don't throw your wipes into your toilet but something you've been on the show to talk about before is uh just as important uh and that is pharmaceuticals uh because a lot of people decide that uh well when the uh their pharmaceuticals are out of date their medicines are been sitting in the in the cabinet in the bathroom for you know seven years and then they s decide well the easiest thing let's just flush it down the toilet why is that such a bad idea deborah shore well thanks mike uh please don't flush unused or expired meds down the toilet or pour them down the sink for a variety of reasons first uh, we can't remove all of those pharmaceutical chemicals in the sewage treatment process. So some of those chemicals will pass through the treatment plants and end up in our waterways or end up in biosolids. And that's not good for the environment. Some studies are beginning to show detrimental effects on fish because they are in this toxic mix uh, 24 seven of a variety of chemicals, but also if you don't know what to do or how to safely dispose of your meds, they can accumulate at home and become a risk to seniors who may accidentally mix things, to people rifling through medicine cabinets. Now we believe that uh, data shows that nearly half of the people who get addicted to prescription medicines start with that drug dealer in their home, namely the medicine cabinet. So it's really important to find, and happily, the, in Cook County at least, the Sheriff's Department uh, has expanded safe collection sites for people to dispose of their unused meds, and they are then safely destroyed in a way that doesn't damage the environment. Yeah, and a lot of them are in the, uh, the precinct districts. So I could go, you know, to the 14th here on California um, in Chicago and, and take my medicines there. Um, and, uh, I think that's uh, an interesting observation about how people become addicted be simply because the medicine is it's there around. That's, that's really a scary thought, Deborah. Well, the other thing I want, the other thing I'd like to mention is that the sheriff's department has a mail back program that was established initially to serve people who were homebound or shut-ins. Well, we're all homebound now. And so if you call this number, they will send you a, a postage paid envelope. Uh, you can't put liquids in it, but you can put pills in it. It gets sent to a safe collection site and then will be destroyed. And the number is on the Sheriff's Department website but it's 1-844-688-7379. I don't know if they're answering it daily. They, they're pretty busy, but I would suggest you try it. Mm -hmm. We'll be working with them to expand that program during the coronavirus. Just pandemic. put that up in the Facebook feed, and I think our interns will be adding that to Twitter as well. Terrific. Okay. And uh, are you working on uh state laws for that as well in terms of pharmaceuticals i'm glad you asked mike there has been a bill introduced in the illinois general assembly it's house bill 4888 to establish a statewide drug take back program that would be overseen by the illinois pa but it would require the pharmaceutical manufacturers to pay for the costs of a collection program. Mm -hmm. The existing collection sites, some are in pharmacies, some in village halls or in police stations, could continue and do that good work, but the number of sites would be expanded, education and outreach would be expanded, and the manufacturers would collaborate in this program and pay for the costs. This has been done in six other states already, 
California, Oregon, Washington, New York, Massachusetts, and Vermont. We think it's time for Illinois, the great heartland state, to take the lead here in the Midwest. And so is that um, institutional as well as residential for the take back? So if hospitals and medical facilities? They could become a collection site, yes. And uh, the bill has quite a few co-sponsors, but it is in uh, the pharmaceutical uh, committee. And actually we think many, many worthy bills uh, won't make it out of committee this session, mm -hmm. but we hope it will be reintroduced uh, after the first of the year. We'll see. Well, you're talking about session. It was something we were talking about during the break is the idea that you can continue to meet the MWRD uh, via remote conferencing. Um, and you said that was part of the proclamation made by Governor J.B. Pritzker uh, at the start of the uh, stay-at-home order. That's correct. In, in the past, we have been required by our own rules and by the Open Meetings Act to meet uh, in person. We have a nine-member board and we meet twice a month uh, on the first and third Thursday of the month. Uh, after the first uh, declaration, uh, we had to cancel two of our meetings, but just last week we did arrange for a remote meeting. We were audio only, but the public mm -hmm. could listen in and participate. And we hope that our next meeting, which is May 7th, will be audio and video as well. Uh, and these are considerations that a lot of people uh, that don't occur. To, to folks about how do you meet? Congress is going through that right now. How do they meet? They have to meet in person and they're bringing in 60 people at a time yeah. with masks so they can vote. It's really a strange, strange situation. I'm sorry, I'm knocking the table here. <laughs> uh, it's a strange situation to, uh, to see our yeah. government trying to figure out how to work. And for municipalities that have to have open door laws, open door rules so that people can hear it. That's tricky. How do you do that when not everyone can access the internet to watch a meeting? So Peggy, that's a great point because I don't know if you've heard, but there are a number of meetings or I know that some Congress members have had town halls, which are publicly advertised mm -hmm. and open to the public that have been hacked as it were. These are on the Zoom platform by outsiders and, and who have been posting pornography and they've had to shut that down. So the meetings do need to be open. We want the public to participate, yeah. that's a good thing. But how do we do so in a way that allows us to conduct our business and uh, avoids uh, intrusions that are unwarranted? It's a brave new world. All right, we've got about two yeah. minutes left. Somebody, somebody just posted the city of Aurora handles it on Zoom via Zoom on Facebook. Yeah, and there are security measures you can do with Zoom, and that's the other thing we're learning about. And, and as I said the other day, boy, Skype has got to be really frustrated right now because Zoom's getting all the publicity right now. What, can't wait to see what happens with, with Skype steps up its game. Uh, with just a couple of minutes left, Deb, you're an outdoors person. You are the uh, founding editor of uh, Chicago Wilderness, Wilderness Magazine, and we're a leader in the wilderness Chicago wilderness uh, effort. And um, is this driving you crazy? How are you getting your fix for nature right now? Well, and it is so important to get outside and get fresh air and uh, realize that we are still part of a wonderful world with birds and spring plants coming up and uh, just do so in a way that is safe, that maintains social distancing. In Cook County, uh, residents are very fortunate to have the Cook County Forest Preserves. And while the Forest Preserve District has announced they've closed some of the very popular areas, mostly the parking lots, because they found people were congregating, hosting barbecues and picnics, I think if you do your research and go to the Forest Preserve website, there are many, many areas where you can access trails, I'm told that the bike trails are still open, uh, that people can walk and bike and just be a good uh, participant, maintain that social distancing 
so others can enjoy it too. It's, we yeah. Have, bird, yeah, bird watching season. It's uh, people want to do that. Well, that's yeah. uh, that's it, uh, Deborah. Thank you so much for being part of this. More information at debrashore.org, or you can go to mwrd.org. You can go to my website and see some of the links we've been talking about. What you should be putting in your toilet and not putting in your toilet. We're going to talk more water issues in the future. Stay safe, Deborah. It's always great to see you. Thanks so much, Mike and Peggy. It's great to be with you. It's the Mike at Gabby Road Radio. Yeah, I know. Welcome back. <laughs> I can what? hear the Facebook algorithms right now going, hmm. Uh, Ooh, no, they can't long. quite. They can't. It's not exactly the same. So <laughs> we'll see. I, I don't I don't even I don't care anymore. I just <laughs> I play whatever I want to play. Uh, welcome back to the Mike Novak show with Peggy Malecki of the Keep Eating Healthy campaign. Uh, at Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery in Champaign, Illinois. It's been a good spring. They are milking more than 100 goats currently. I hope they're not doing it all at the same wow, time. Wow, those folks are busy. <laughs> they are. Um, it means lots of cheese, including fresh chive and lemon zest chevre. Is it chevre? Um, I don't know. Goat because, cheese. Uh, 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 little Bloom on the Prairie their first batch of goat milk, camembert chi uh, style cheese, and uh, the Fruit Leather Trio, or what they call Fruit Wowzers, by Jeff Hake of Funks Grove Heritage Fruits and Grains. And Jeff Hake is a friend of the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. So take advantage of Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery. Next up, Backyard Patch Herbs, grown locally in Addison, Illinois. You can turn their dried herbs into cooking blends, herbal teas, and herb-flavored soup and bread mixes. There's no gluten, no salt, no preservatives, and the herbs are grown chemical-free. And guess what? Shh. I got my kitty some organic catnip Ooh. from Backyard Patch Herbs. She liked it. We're going to need a Facebook <laughs> video of that. I think, I think so. Uh, and by the way, they even provide recipes and other information on their website. And then there's our friends at uh, Cedar Valley Sustainable Farm, CSA. Like a lot of farms, they're adapting on the fly. A friend of mine I know did a pickup just yesterday of some great meats. They're a, a meat CSA. So if, if you want humanely raised meat, this is the place to go. If you have a CSA, there's no charge for additions. They can do an a la carte. For non-members, however, there's a $5 delivery charge on orders under $50. With orders over $50, getting free, safe delivery. They've got the masks. They've got the gloves. Everything's cool. Click on the Keep Eating Healthy logo at MikeNovak.net to order from all of these great operations. Help us support them while they support us. Go to MikeNovak.net, M-I-K-E-N-O-W-A-K.net for more details. Welcome back to the show. Uh, you know, it's it's weird to have us just sitting here and and not cramming in another guest right now and trying to get the Zoom <laughs> machine working. It's like, let's just relax. Let's. <sighs> I want to talk about what's going on. Let me show you something here, because I. Oh, and by the way, we have to w uh, wish Scott Jameson a uh, happy birthday. He is our friend from Bartlett Tree Experts, and I know. Skeet from Bartlett Tree Experts is watching right now. And uh, Scott Jameson, if you're listening, this is for you. Shut up, Wesley. Okay, just... Uh, <laughs> As opposed had... to Alan, Alan. <laughs> oh, I can, I can find Alan, too, I, if, uh, if I have a, a second here. It's not as easy as it is at the station to, yeah. uh, to get all of this working. Wait a second. Here we go. Yeah. Alan, 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 Alan. Alan. All right, there we go. Now everything in order. I, <laughs> I've, and I want to show you this as well. Look at this baby. 
this beautiful tomato plant. Ooh, wow. This is, uh, I know, this is probably. Is that a happy, happy leaf plant? It's a happy leaf plant where it's under the happy, it's not under them right now, but uh, most of the day it's under the happy leaf LED grow light. Go to happyleafled.com. Uh, it's a sun lucky from Casey Tomato, our friend Casey Tomato. And we should do a shout out. Uh, Kayla and Hannah, if, uh, if you can tag Casey Tomato on a tweet, let them know that his son Lucky is rocking. This is the biggest. Yeah, if you can do a screen screen grab there, do a screenshot and tweet it uh, off to KC. Uh, maybe we can do that. Um, I, I don't know. There's something in the genetics of this particular seed because this one just took off. That like, one you know, went crazy. Yeah. It went crazy. It's so lush. And look at, I mean, not, not um, spindly hmm. at all. You can see like leaves right at the bottom of the pot. So we've got... Uh, tomatoes coming up we've got we just had um, a couple of cantaloupes germinate uh just the other day um and of course we're not putting them out now because it's 40 degrees outside but uh we're getting them ready for excellent when the warm weather hits so yeah uh, i, I up, upsized up potted some of my kale so those, those are doing really well right now too oh, i took those ready to go out well i put mine outside uh, uh, several days ago, yeah. and I'm actually kind of happy I did because it, then it rained. Well, I, I I put mine outside, then I brought them back in and had to replant them all. Why? Dig, 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 dig. Oh, chipmunks. Chipmunks. Oh, I'll tell you. Ah. What, here's what we do. You give the chipmunks this coronavirus <laughs> here. Uh, no, can I use your no pen? No. Uh, no. Wait. The chipmunks. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> all right. You give them. <laughs> Get away from so my anybody, anybody who has chipmunk tips that work, let us know on Twitter. Let us know on Facebook. Let and you. also, we heard from Shelly in Aurora. She's got tree work scheduled with Bartlett. She hey. says, thank you, Frank. All right. All you folks. And by the way, yeah, if you need your tree work done, they'll do it during the pandemic. Um, very carefully, social distancing. Just a reminder, this it might be a really good time if you've got an issue with your tree. Basically, we're talking about triage, no pun intended. But I'm issue, but I'm uh, where's uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Alan, Alan, Alan. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and uh, uh, but you know, if you got some kind of emergency, uh, give the folks at Bartlett Tree Experts a call, mm -hmm. go to bartlett.com. Um, one of the things we wanted to say here, okay, so what if the uh, about the only thing we're missing here. Well, what, it, what happened with city council? Right, which was pretty amazing. After several years, we've been talking on this show um, about horses that pull carriages in Chicago, and there's a group called Chicago Alliance for Animals that has been working round the clock, basically documenting the conditions of the horses and uh, trying to get city council. And they had the support for several years. They just couldn't get it out of committee. Who knows what Emma Mitz was thinking as the committee chair? Um, well, it got out of committee and it got voted in city council this week. And as of the end of the year, uh, there will no longer be horses and carriages in downtown Chicago. Uh, the licenses will expire and that will become a thing of the past. It's kind of hard to imagine how they even have any customers before the end of the year with the uh, COVID-19 crisis. Um, so congratulations to Jody Whitaker and Chicago Alliance for Animals. And this may be the start of uh, a movement across the country. It's uh, very interesting and we'll have her on soon to talk about that. All right, folks, thank you for being part of the show. All of you listening locally, we'll talk to you next hour. Otherwise, go green or... The second hour of the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. This hour is brought to you by Bartlett Tree Experts. Every tree needs a champion. Go to Bartlett.com. Here they are again, Peggy Malecki and Mike Novak. All I need is good food to eat and make me healthy, wealthy, wide awake. Lettuce, tomatoes, root and bake. What about those sweet potatoes? All I need is good food to eat. All I need is good food to eat. All I need is good food to eat. And welcome to the second hour of the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. I see the Gabby Road folks uh, are tuned in. Hi, Justin. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Fred. 
Uh, they're coming up next. Oh, my goodness. We just got a delivery of whole wheat flour. Holy Ooh. smoke. Okay, look at this. There it is. Wow. Kathleen's holding that up there. And uh, Nice. A, friend, a, a neighbor of ours went out the other day and said, uh, what can we get you? And we said, well, if you can find some whole wheat flour, that'd be great. Um, and they couldn't at the time. And now, all of a sudden, on a Sunday morning, here's whole wheat flour showing up on our porch. Our neighbors have been great uh, about this. It's been, um, uh, they've been very cool because yeah. I'm, you know, like you, Peggy, I ain't going anywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed, actually, at people who go into stores right now. I'm stunned that people, <laughs> anybody walks into a store. And unless I know that, you have to. Unless you, have, but define have to. You know, how do you, how do you define that? I don't know. No, sometimes but, like picking up prescriptions, not everybody delivers, for example. Well, that's true. One, and I'll tell you, we should just sit here one of these Sundays and talk about the nightmare of trying to shop uh, remotely. Um, for instance, uh, we ordered some stuff from Costco. I want my, <laughs> I want my walnuts. Okay. Cause you get them real cheap at Costco and pistachios and raisins. And we did this two day thing. It's a two-day delivery, and they still told, waiting. Uh, yeah, uh, they said the two-day delivery is now taking about two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is reality right now. Um, and there are other, you know, issues obviously yeah. doing that. Yeah. Uh, well, but I, I go ahead. I just want to mention though, because we're going to run out of time very really quick, um, that garden centers uh, have been reopened in That's a new reality for garden centers. Yes. Right in uh, Illinois and Michigan. Um, and you got this uh, thing from Grower Talks, uh, Chris Beatty's at uh, Ball Seed, Ball Hort, and uh, talks about what's going on. Uh, the rulings in both states are they're a little bit different. In, in Michigan, Governor Whitmer has not termed garden centers essential. However, she said the garden stores and nurseries can reopen immediately subject to enhanced social distancing rules, which include barring gatherings of any size in which people cannot maintain six feet of distance, limiting um, in-person uh, interaction with clients and patrons. And of course, I'm, I'm putting my hand sanitizer on now because I just touched something that came out. Must establish lines to regulate entry with markings for patrons to enable them to stand at least six feet apart. Uh, alternative to lines, letting customers wait in the cars for text messages, and then depending on sizing of the store, how many customers can be in there at any given point. And part of that is, um, you know, we had uh, Joel Barzak uh, on the show last week from Bloom and Gardens in Sycamore, mm -hmm. Illinois, and he was very frustrated at this. And I called him during the week, and he's very pleased that this is happening. Um, and as long as uh, it says uh, stores of more than 50,000 square feet must limit the number of customers in the store at one time, excluding employees to four people per 1,000 square feet of customer floor space. It must create at least two hours per week of dedicated shopping time for vulnerable populations like me. Uh, so um, I'm yeah. glad that the garden centers are back in the game. Yeah, in Illinois, Pritzker, Governor Pritzker said greenhouses, garden centers, and nurseries are essential, effective May first. Right. So that hasn't happened yet. We've got one more Sunday. We've got a few days before we get to that. So that's what's uh, going to go on. Uh, and we're just about to break. So I'll let you know that in the next segment, we've got our buddy Nick Mink from Sitka Salmon Shares, great sponsor of the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki, talking about our fisheries, what's going on out there, what's going on with his own particular business. Uh, I think you're going to find it a, um, an amazing conversation. He's the best. So stick around. The Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki, and we will be right back. In Chicago. Welcome back to the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. And boy, are we pleased to have Nick Mink uh, on the Zoom machine with us this morning. But he's not up. Well, and in full disclosure, he is the co-founder and chief executive officer for Sitka Salmon Shares. And of course, they are a proud sponsor of 
the Mike Novak show with Peggy Malecki. Um, I got some of your salmon in my freezer right now, and I can't tell you how glad I am that it's there right now. I mean, this is a time when you want your your food to be safe, and that's why we're doing the Keep Eating Healthy campaign on the show, and this is why we promote companies like Sitka Salmon Shares. Um, in fact, let's start right there, Nick. You're not in Alaska today. You can't even get to Alaska right now, from what I understand. Is that true? Um, it's a lot harder. Alaska's uh, un, under a quarantine. Uh, anybody that comes in or anybody in the fish industry is supposed to quarantine for two weeks before we go up there and uh, quarantine for two weeks when we get there. Um, obviously, Alaska is a rural state with uh, not great access to um, you know, uh, not the same type of access to health care that people have down here. And so um, the state is acting cautiously, but as a company, we're acting even more cautiously. So uh, by now, I'm usually up there and uh, doing things with the, our fishermen and the plant. And uh, I don't, I, I'm planning to just kind of stick it out in the Midwest for for most, if not the entire year this year. So it's, it's definitely going to be a really different experience for me and and for the company. And as we were talking about, I'm, I'm growing my first garden in a while here. So I'm excited Yay. to do that type of Midwestern food production. Mm -hmm. All right. Should I, should I um, uh, taunt him with your tomato plant? I'm going to taunt you with my tomato plant. This is something that I, uh, this is how far along my tomato plant is. Incredible. Is that, is I have that? nothing. I have nothing that far along. But I well, my we don't have we don't have other plants that are that far along. Yeah. This one is a mutant. Okay, I, I have one plant that's that's much bigger than the others. I wonder if it's the sun lucky. The tag got lost, so I wonder if it's the sun lucky. It's possible. Sun Could lucky be. has sort of a, a potato leaf. Yeah, potato leaf. So it might be. So don't worry about it, uh, Nick. And by the way, folks, uh, Nick is in uh, Madison, Wisconsin right now um although your company is based in galesburg so i imagine you do a lot of traveling between those two cities i haven't done i haven't we i haven't traveled i haven't done anything for six weeks uh, today is going to be uh, i'm going down to galesburg uh tonight for the first time since i think march 10th uh you know as a food manufacturer and as a food producer i mean you know our 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 awareness about you know uh, you know food safety and and uh, uh, hygiene has always been good, but you know everything now is heightened. So we've we've really kept um, a very close um, uh, tabs on uh, making sure that we're following all local, state, CDC rules with the most conservative interpretation possible. And what that means is. Uh, we don't have really anybody going in or out of of, uh, of of our facilities in Alaska or in Galesburg outside of the the folks that work there. Um, and, uh, and you know we haven't had managers going down or not a lot of travel uh, back and forth between our uh, our facilities right now. So I yeah I've only I've I've zoomed in to to see what's happening in our manufacturing center in in uh, or in our, our distribution center in Galesburg, but. Yeah, it's been pretty hands off now for six or six or seven weeks. Well, uh, a lot of folks are interested in Sitka Salmon Shares. Um, it's um, among our sponsors. I, I I think I get the most raised eyebrows mm -hmm. from people about your products. Uh, they're always very, you know, how does that work? And uh, is it is it really good? And I tell them you haven't tasted fish like this ever in your entire life, unless you're a fisherman and you do it yourself. Okay. Um, in Alaska. Uh, and so what I would ask you right now, I got two questions. One, uh, how's the company moving forward during the pandemic? And two, how is it and why is it that products from Sitka Salmon Shares are safe to buy and to, uh, and why would folks want to have them right now during the COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, I mean, for those of for those of you that are listening and have never heard of us, um, you know, we're we're a community supported agriculture program uh, like program, but for fish. So we're a community supported fishery, which means we've got uh, about twenty five fishermen in Alaska who uh, are owners of the company, and we have a little processing plant 
uh, in Alaska where we, we process our own fish and then we uh, ship the fish in Illinois. And then from there, uh, we have uh, uh, our delivery drivers who deliver it to people's homes. So we have this really nice integrated supply chain, which uh, is um, fully, um, you know, under our control, which of course is a really nice uh, thing to have right now. And that's all land shipping and not airplanes, right? Yeah, all land shipping and no airplanes. And, you know, the, the importance of, of knowing where your food comes from and who is producing your food, uh, you know, it's, it's only heightened, right? I, I mean, you, you look at what's happening to our food system right now, um, huge challenges with the, the big guys, you know, the bigger farmers having to leave um, you know, products in the field to rot. I'm sure you, your readers are aware of that. Yeah. Um, all of our big uh, meat, meat manufacturers uh, have to close up because of their problems with, uh, with COVID um, and coronavirus and, and unfortunately not following the rules that they should have been following, um, which were unfortunately only made, um, you know, as suggestions by uh, the CDC instead of, um, instead of rules. So, you know, of course we should all know where our food is coming from right now. And, and it's even more important. And, uh, you know, for us, uh, the thing is we have the entire supply chain, um, um, under our, under the umbrella of our company. So, you know, it goes from the fishermen to, uh, to us at our, at our little fish plant in Sitka. And then, to our um, uh, center, distribution center in Galesburg, and then right to home consumers. And, you know, we've got all sorts of new policies and procedures in place to keep our, uh, our, our food safe and our consumers safe. Um, you know, everything from, you know, new ways of, you know, cutting fish to new ways of packing our fish. Um, and then obviously we're practicing, the, you know, the no contact delivery um, so that, you know, people can feel safe when they get uh, to, when our when our food gets when our food uh, gets to their doorstep, and mm -hmm. you know uh, it's been a good time to be you know on some level we're an online grocer right people can go to www.sickasalmonshares choose their package and um, you know right now we're we're kind of uh, ramping up our season we're doing tons of white fish so black cod halibut ling cod yellow eye um, Pacific cod um, we're doing Dungeness crab right now too so. We're actively uh, harvesting and distributing, and um, it's a really, you know, there is a certain new relevance to our company and to our brand um, that maybe we didn't even have six or seven weeks ago because, you know, we are helping to support small-scale American fishermen who are really struggling right now in this crisis. We are getting people healthy food direct to their doorsteps. They don't have to go to a grocery store. And then, you know, um, they, they just, people go up on, uh, online and it shows up at their doorstep once a month. And it's a really nice and easy way for people to incorporate an amazingly healthy protein uh, from a healthy wild system uh, in the North Pacific into their diet. So, uh, uh, Peggy, uh, you wanted to jump in there? Yeah, I was, I was just going to ask you, Nick, about some of the things that, that you're doing for your small fishermen that your, your subscribers, your, your CSF subscribers yeah. can also do to help them. Yeah. I mean, fisheries, uh, I love you guys. I did a little lecture that's up on YouTube about kind of what's happening to domestic mm -hmm. fisheries right now. And man, they're really struggling. Um, and they're really struggling for a couple reasons. Uh, reason one is domestic fisheries have almost entirely been reliant on an export market, right? So most of the fish that the United States produces goes somewhere else, right? It wow. goes to China for processing or for consumption. It goes to Thailand for processing. It goes to the EU. And, and our fish doesn't go to China and our fish doesn't go to Thailand, but the, the you know, all, all the fishermen that fish in Alaska, they're connected to those markets. The fishermen that fish in Washington and Oregon and, you know, Florida and New England, they're all connected to those markets. And so, you know, the, the domestic fleet the U.S. fisherman is really struggling because of the discombobulation of, of, of that market and the real destruction of these international markets. And then the second reason why they're struggling is if it doesn't go to China or it doesn't go to the EU, it goes to restaurants. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously we know what's happening with restaurants. Right. Right? 
So Nick, I'll tell you, a, a month ago, a month ago, I saw a story on the news. Um, it was just before April. Uh, and a fisherman was saying, I, I don't think, uh, you know, because there were, it's, it was some part of the country where the fishing season started April 1st. And he said, I don't, I don't even think I'm going to go out. There's, there's no point in this. And um, that was a month ago. And, and, and the, uh, the industry was tanking then. So it must be in real trouble right now, I would think. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I've said, I say that all, all U.S. fishermen are in one of three buckets. Bucket one is they're going out and fishing, but for like half of what they might have made last year. Like they're just barely covering their fixed costs, right? Uh, bucket two is that they can't cover their fixed costs and they're just tied up at the dock. Um, or bucket three, the fisheries have been shut down by managers completely because it's not worth the, because there's no marketplace right now, mm -hmm. it's not worth the risk for fishermen to go out and to try to harvest fish for which there's no market. And, and, and as, as your viewers may know, or your listeners may know, you know, fishing is still the most dangerous profession in the United States, right? And so why, why risk human life uh, for a fish or for a, a, a product from the ocean that's not, um, that's not, you know, gonna, gonna, you know, be bought? Uh, so, you know, fishermen are really struggling. And for well, our- where, where are you guys? Where, well, so, which bucket are, are you in? We're, we're, another, we're none of them because our fishermen fish for a, a domestic home consumer. Yeah. So uh, our fishermen, you know, but the 25 of them are doing extremely well because of this system that we set up and because of our members who are there to support yeah. them in the yeah. same way that, that farmers who have good CSAs uh, are shielded from a lot of the risks out there. Yeah. So, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons we have community-supported agriculture, one of the reasons we have direct-to-consumer connections for small producers, whether they be fishermen or, for, or farmers, is to be able to deal with crises like this and to be able to share the risk between the consumer and the producer. And, you know, it's, it's been amazing what our CSF members have been able to do for our fishermen in being able to allow Sitka salmon shares to offer um, consistent, reliable, durable pricing during this time of crisis. And you know, our, our system and our, our CSF is going to be directly responsible for allowing 25 small scale fishermen to be able to make it through a really, really challenging time. Yeah, and you Peggy, have a yeah, fisherman you... fund set up, right? Oh yeah, and we've, we've even gone beyond that. We've set up a, a, a fisherman fund where we're selling swag Really cool shirts. Um, you go to our website to see those. And I'm teaching a little class uh, on U.S. fisheries starting uh, a couple weeks from now. So we're really trying, as a company, we're trying to pull out all the stops to ensure that our, our fishermen um, and our fleet is, is protected as much as possible during these, you know, like I said, really challenging times for, for small-scale U.S. fishermen. And today, I understand, is the final day to register for that course you were talking about, the online it class? Is. Yeah, we'll it is. that link up. It's uh, the final day to register for our Fisherman Fund course. U.S. Fisheries, two, 250 bucks gets you some books and actually some, some uh, amazing fish that we've sourced from a few of our fishing partners uh, or, or friends around the country who themselves are, are kind of uh, struggling. And so we've... we've We've uh, actually gone and uh, are working with a couple of small-scale uh, fishermen in Louisiana and uh, New England to source some fish for this, uh, this class. All right, I'm going to have to uh, interrupt you here. We're going to break and come back and talk to uh, Nick Mink from Sitka Salmon Shares. Go to sitkasalmonshares.com. We'll be right back. Yeah, I get locked down. I want banana, <laughs> banana bread. Banana. The banana looking pretty brown. Okay, yeah, I'm telling you, they're out. Throw there. them in the freezer. Yeah, exactly, and then throw them in the blender when you do your smoothie. Hey, welcome to the Keep Eating Healthy campaign on the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. Um, we're highlighting some small farms. We were talking to Nick Mink about uh, community-supported fisheries. We're talking about community-supported agriculture as well. And at Pra uh, Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery in Champaign, Illinois, they're talking about a great spring, milking more than 100 goats currently. That means lots of cheese, including fresh chive and lemon zest chev. 
Uh, Little Bloom on the Prairie, their first batch of goat milk camembert style cheese, and the Fruit Leather Trio, or as they call it, Fruit Wowzers by Jeff Hake of Funk's Grove Heritage Fruits and Grains. So you're going to want to click on to the Keep Eating Healthy campaign at MikeNovak.net to find out about Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery. You also want to find out about Backyard Patch Herbs. They're grown locally in Addison, Illinois. And Kathleen and I are finding out how to turn dried herbs into cooking blends, herbal teas. We actually made some muffins the other day. Nice. Uh, the herb flavored soup and bread mixes. As I mentioned earlier, I got some organic catnip for La Gata, <laughs> my kitty. Uh, there's no happy cat. Yeah, she's very happy now. <laughs> there's no gluten, no salt, no preservatives. And the herbs are grown chemical free. They even provide recipes and other, other information on their website. So you can click on and find them. And then there's Cedar Valley Sustainable Farm CSA. Like a lot of farms, they're adapting on the fly to meet the demands of the COVID-19 emergency, including online orders. If you have a CSA at Cedar Valley Sustainable Farm, there's no charge for additions. It's a la carte. For non-members, there's a $5 delivery charge. It's not a big deal, five bucks. For orders under $50, and with orders over, over $50, uh, you can get a free, safe, delivery. So as I said, click on the Keep Eating Healthy logo and MikeNovak.net to order from all of these great operations. Mm -hmm. Help us support them while they support us. Go to MikeNovak.net, M-I-K-E-N-O-W-A-K.net for more details. And speaking of uh, small businesses, that's why we have Nick Mink, who is the CEO and co-founder of Sitka Salmon Shares. Uh, we've been talking about their sustainability and their operation during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, let's get to a slightly bigger picture here, Nick. One of the stories I've been, or some of the stories I've been reading, and I've got some posted at MikeNovak.net in my blog, um, is the effect that shutting down fishing operations, especially some of the massive ones across the world, what is that going to do to fish populations? Um, I'm trying hard really hard not to uh oh boy be anti-business but we know that our our oceans are overfished and yeah. i'm kind of grateful that there's a pause in the action one of the articles alluded to world war ii because a lot of boats couldn't go out for fear of mines and being attacked uh fishing or, or they were being used for military instead right and fish populations rebounded during the war years, only to be smacked back down once the war was over and people fished more than ever. So yeah. what do you see happening as a result of this? Yeah, I mean, you know, oceans are, are I mean, actually one of the great stories that I think I've been able to, I really love viewing is kind of the resilience of earth and how um, some of these natural and wild systems are reclaiming um, earth for themselves again after only a few weeks of humans not being there. And I think, you know, that's especially true with our oceans. And, um, you know, in, in, in thinking through the opportunities uh, that come with, um, you know, being able to be more thoughtful or having some of these larger fisheries shut down uh, for a season or two, um, you know, it, it's only going to add to um, the, I mean, I mean you know, I, I think there's a great environmental opportunity here um, in how we're rethinking resource extraction and how we're thinking, how we re, how we're rethinking kind of our communities and who we are. And yeah, I mean, to be able to give the oceans, particularly from these larger fishing vessels, a rest um, is only going to have a, 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 a huge upside. Um, for fish populations, for oceans. And How so long does it take a fish population to rebound? I was reading that some of them you need, you know, you got to give it about a year and then that would result in a huge uptick in population. Yeah, it, 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 it all depends on the life cycle of the fish, really. Um, it all, and a lot of it depends on the product, you know, where you are in the particular, uh, you know, places in the oceans. You know, the North Atlantic and the North Pacific are, you know, much more productive, for instance, than places around the equator because of, you know, sunlight and 
pushing currents. And so it's hard to put it in a, you know, a simple like, hey, if we rest, you know, the oceans for a year, or for a season, um, you know, things will be great. But mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, fish grow, um, you know, population, fish grow and mature at different times, population dynamics are different, the ocean is different at different places. So it's really hard to put a one size fits all uh, thing on uh, on our resource extraction or on fish production, but certainly you know um, any any time up uh, off, uh, particularly from really significant industrial fisheries, uh, has the opportunity to 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 help uh, the resource and support healthier oceans, um, as you said, Mike, in a relatively quick amount of time. Uh, you know, uh, what I'm wondering is, uh, you say we're rethinking things. We're, we're rethinking our clean air. We're looking at it. Although I went on Guy McPherson's uh, blog post yesterday, uh, the don't you smile at me, Peggy. He's, you know, he's saying there's a problem with that. Mm -hmm. All this haze is going away because we're going to absorb more heat. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to have him back on the show real soon, if only so I can get another 10,000 views yeah. uh, of, uh, my, my, my head was swimming after I read his post last night though. Um, uh, he did a post last night. I didn't see. No, no. I, I read his, he had several blog posts and yeah, after reading got, yeah, his I, theories on this, I know, like, ah. but, but, you know, it might mean that we rethink the way, um, uh, we pollute our air. Uh, looking at the fisheries, there are already seasons where you can and cannot fish. Do you think any of those, Nick, might be expanded because of this if we show uh, an increase in population of the fish and the good that's happening right now? Uh, it, that's, un that's, that's unclear to me. I mean, you know, uh, the, uh, most U.S. fisheries management is pretty dynamic, meaning that they're, it, it's responsive, right? It's not set in stone because wild fish populations are dynamic. All right. So, I would think absolutely if there is, if there's an indication that um, that you know some of the the um, things that are happening right now are improving fish populations or change the way that management needs to happen, then certainly I think that um, uh, U.S. fisheries managers and state fisheries managers would take that into consideration as they go about um, building you know the post the post COVID fish world, which is also like the, the climate change fish world, right? You know, that's what we were right. talking about last time. And I mean, I just think what's happening right now and also with climate change as another layer, just it speaks to how profoundly I think we need to rethink food production in the United States, right? And that's agricultural production and, and you know, fish production. Yeah, Peggy? Uh, ocean production and relocalizing re our systems in the context of agriculture Redomesticating our systems in the context of fisheries to ensure that we have the type of food security that we need in a crisis like this again. To ensure right. that we have the let's, type. Let's get Peggy once again in a question here. We got two minutes left, Nick. Yeah, it's it's two minutes, so I don't know that we can get to it. We were talking briefly about Bristol Bay and some of the more remote areas of production in Alaska and Louisiana and other places, and and how do we tie that in to make sure that those populations in the remote areas just don't totally get lost in the recovery at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's, you know, rural, you know, rural America is, is obviously we're, we're feeling it, it very differently uh, in, in rural places than in urban places. It's happening at a different time. There's a different type of um, cultural understanding of what's taking on, but what's happening. But, but remember, you know, most of our, our fish production and our agricultural production, so our food production, takes place in rural areas and particularly fish production, you know, with, at Br Bristol Bay where most of uh, the world sockeye, wild sockeye is produced. Um, we're starting to have these wild salmon start just beginning to come online with what's happened with, you know, Copper River and Cordova. They're going to start fishing for salmon in a couple weeks. And, um, you know, you've got these very remote rural areas where you need, you know, uh, where food producers are coming into capital is, you know, starting to move into fish processing workers are moving into. So, boy, you have to proceed with a lot of caution um, as we look at, you know, our, the summer of food production, whether it's fish uh, or whether it's agriculture, because, um, you know, the, the world is being upended right now. And, and uh, so it's, it's hard, you know, the back to the struggle that I think we're all dealing with is like, how do you, 
how do you protect the type of economic system that you want to protect and promote while also helping to protect and uh, you know, public health. And- We're going to have to leave it there, Nick. Thank you so much. Go to SitkaSalmonShares.com. You'll be back on the show soon. It's the Mike Novak Show with Peggy Malecki. Rick DeMaio is next. And WCGO. of the song it was uh hard to understand the lyrics yeah. part of the problem what i realized when you you get parody songs on the show is if you don't know the original song the parody doesn't make doesn't any make sense, sense to yeah. you yeah so i saw a bunch of parodies so i went wow it's really good never heard the original before <laughs> but uh okay what you gonna do uh welcome back to the mike novak show with peggy malecki let's bring in meteorologist rick DeMaio. where are you this morning rick Hello? Rick? Yeah, hello? Hello? There, there you are. I'm on the air. Okay, what you're happened? on the air. He's broadcasting. I didn't I did, I did, I did do anything. I just started talking. So okay. maybe, maybe you guys didn't push the right button. Is that it? Uh, well, I'm not pushing any buttons here. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Randall on the other end. Um, but he's been really that's good. That's okay. That's okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're we're okay. we're like we're just so happy because the show has been relatively glitch free today. And uh, shh, good. Be bad, be bad. <laughs> Don't tell I, the chipmunks. I'm the first glitch. <laughs> you, are, <laughs> you are. You know, Rick, you're always a glitch on our show. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, I don't know either. So well, y'all, uh, uh, who, who, who is guys... settled? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I'm I'm still in the same place. We're moving on Wednesday. Ah. ah, so that's the other thing I've been meaning to talk to you about. What the heck are you doing moving during a pandemic? Uh, you know what? Um, we've been thinking about this for the last year. Our lease was up. Uh, we saw something. We acted on it. And it was like, is it the worst time to do it? Yes. But is it the most opportune time? Yes. So okay. as Winston Churchill said, when you're when you're pushing and it seems like things are like hell, keep pushing. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Oh boy! Uh, and uh, we and we, uh, we were talking to Nick uh, Mink uh, from Sitka Salmon Shares about his garden. He's up in Madison, mm-hmm. and uh, he's a little frustrated because it's been cool. It's coldish. Yeah. Um, it's getting and it's, it's wet. <laughs> yeah, been, well, yeah, really wet. I mean, I planted some stuff the other yeah. day, and then it rained for like three days. Um, just yeah, uh, yeah. But I'm seeing sun today. I'm seeing a little hazy sun yeah. today. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's not like we've had a lot of rain. We're actually um, slightly, I think, near normal. But we haven't really had any periods of dry weather, and we haven't had any periods of really sunny, warm weather. So as you know, uh, this time of the year with compacted soil, as long as the water that fell three days ago didn't dry up, it'll probably maybe not be in that first half inch, but it'll be in the lower, you know, couple of inches. And even though there's a little bit of sun today, there's kind of a thin overcast and there's a bit of a northeast wind, so it's kind of cool. But we'll actually get slightly above normal temperatures both tomorrow and Tuesday before we take another dip downward, and I mean really downward, like back in the low to mid-50s during the day on Wednesday with another rain system coming through. And this one could be another, you know, maybe one incher. Um, I think rainfall totals across the area uh, from Friday night into Saturday afternoon averaged about six-tenths to about eight-tenths of an inch of rain over us. Um, Central Illinois, they were probably up to about an inch and an inch and a half. There were a couple of rogue reports of over two inches. And remember, those are the same places that got not one but two different springtime heavy snows. So the mm-hmm. central parts of Illinois are actually the wettest parts of the state. Now, granted, that's where most of the corn is, um, but it's still not yet looking like we're going to get into the same type of wet pattern uh, for the month of May that we were last year. Remember last year? We had the wettest May on record. So 
as long as we can get some dry weather in here, which I think we'll do beginning Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the rainfall that we're getting right now is actually beneficial. Yeah, like you said, as long as we can get a little bit of sun and we can dry it out just a little bit, you don't want it constantly moist because that's not going to help. Yeah, and, and again, and, and you know, I've been talking about this for over a month. Um, we have not been that cold this winter, so there's probably not much of a permafrost anywhere, um, and it doesn't look like we're going to get into a frost or a freeze. I, I posted some stuff uh, this morning with my report showing that even though we've, we're getting pretty close to the last day of a frost or a freeze, it doesn't seem that we're getting into that type of a pattern. So, um, and, and you notice this, Mike, and, and especially Peg up on the North Shore, you probably see it more than Mike, um, how the trees are all literally about where they should be this time of the year. And it happens every year. You get like two or three days of sun and warm temperatures and everything just explodes. And, you know, studies show that around here, it's like literally between May 1st and May 10th is when all the trees just completely fully bloom out. So even though we're kind of about, I'd probably say, what, maybe 20% uh, blooming right now, by the time we talk next week, it'll be up to 70, and in two weeks, it'll be at 100. So from a climactic standpoint, rain-wise, we're doing okay temperature-wise. I, you know, it can always be warmer, especially for those who live near the lake. And I know Peg and I have been exchanging oh, yeah. emails. Um, yeah, there have been so many days with northeast winds and temperatures, you know, literally in, in the middle 40s. I mean, yeah. yesterday wind, we had a wind high chills in the middle 30s. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yesterday, Peg, it was 47 at O'Hare for a high. But a lake along the lakefront, it was like 42 or 43. And with the wind, it was probably in the mid to upper 30s. The normal high is 63. I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous. But again, that's what you get around here when you live within a couple of blocks of the lake and the lake hasn't gotten a chance to warm up. So this is kind of standard April stuff. But it does seem to me, guys, that the last four Aprils have been pretty crappy, nonetheless, from beginning to end. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's I think, Part of it is just not a lot of sun right now. Right? Yeah, even if it's cold, yeah, when it's yeah. sunny, it's more. <laughs> yeah, and I and uh, yeah. I noticed that too. Uh, it's just it's it, being locked in at home. When it's dark, you feel well. At least I'm not missing anything outside because yeah. there hasn't been any sun. Well, we need to. Yeah, we need. To, I, I mean, I yeah, that's fine. I need to get to the forecast. Yeah, let's get to yeah, the forecast. So again, um, mid mid fifties away from the lake today. Low fifties if we're lucky along the lakefront. Um, 60 to 65 for everybody tomorrow with a couple of showers in the afternoon. Near 70 on Tuesday with a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Wednesday, only low to mid-50s with rain. And then it stays basically near to slightly below normal for uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But overall, the next two weeks at or slightly below normal temperature-wise and slightly above normal precipitation-wise. All right, Rick. Thanks so much. Uh, good luck with the move. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Uh, I want to thank Deborah Shore, Nick Mink, Rick DeMaio, Randall, Michael, Kayla, Hannah. Until next time, go green or go home. Uh, Stadler? Uh, what? Is that it? Yes, it's over. How'd you like it? I don't know. I slept through the whole thing. Well, you didn't miss much.